Howdy guys, welcome back to the channel. Kel Kellogg here. Um, I'm hiding in the shade, the shade of my crab apple tree here down in my lower garden. Um, I went out gold prospecting yesterday and just about gave myself a heat stroke. I did find some gold, but I don't want to talk about that. It is time for a Northern California fishing report. And today I'm going to highlight two kind of valley adjacent lakes that are offering up red hot trolling action but before i get into that i want to give a shout out to a couple fans of the channel a couple guys that went on over to my store bought gear and ended up catching very nice fish and neither one of these guys are from the great state of california first and i am reading this i got a lot of notes here um first is james lopez from colorado he went out and caught himself this beautiful 22 inch 3.6 pound rainbow while trolling one of my classic trolling flies. And this is what James had to say. He says, I was trolling a fly from your classic kit and the rainbow just ripped my line. This was the first time using flies and man, did it work. It won't be the last time. This is only the beginning, 22 inches, 3.6 pounds from Colorado. So congratulations, James. That is an absolutely beautiful fish. And we're gonna follow that fish up with this eight pound Canadian rainbow that Brian Hughes caught. Um, we do a lot of communicating with Brian. He's up in BC, Canada. He runs our lead core. He runs a bunch of our gear. He's always got a bunch of questions and he loves to talk fishing. I believe he's a lawyer. Um, anyway, he was out fishing. He got this huge eight pound rainbow on one of our speed spoons, trolling it off one of my iconic yellow lead core trolling rods. Um, and I think I need to go to Canada because that fish is absolutely huge. Um, he didn't have a whole lot to say for a lawyer. Um, Brian is a man of few words, but congratulations, Brian. That is a rainbow of a lifetime, just an absolutely beautiful fish. And uh, I'm not even sure what lake he caught that at, but it looks like they have plenty of feed there. If you look at the, uh, the contrast between the size of that fish's head and the girth of its body, that's a tip off that that fish has had, you know, no shortage of food throughout its life. Whenever you see trout that have a disproportionately small head compared to the size of their body, that means their body is growing very fast. And typically that means they've got plenty of food, whether it's shrimp, insects, or bait fish. Okay, congratulations to those guys. They both went big, but you wanna go big and this is where you should head this weekend or this next week because there are two very good trolling bites out there. The first one is at Folsom Lake. Folsom Lake, it continues to amaze. It is kicking out some absolutely huge landlocked kings all the way up to 12 pounds. It's also kicking out holdover rainbows all the way up to six pounds. Um, a lot of those rainbows are being caught incidentally with, you know, to guys that are trolling for the landlocked kings. Let's talk about that king bite. Um, you're gonna wanna hit the main body of the lake, mouth of the South Fork, Browns Ravine, Folsom Point, get out there in open water and grind. That's how the guys are catching the fish. Those salmon are anywhere from 50 to 80 feet deep and they don't bite all the time. You gotta get out there, you gotta put in your time. When they start biting, the action is, is absolutely epic on you know landlocked kings of a lifetime but you got to put in your time to be there when those fish are ready to go they're getting them two ways they're getting them speed trolling and they're getting them slow trolling the preferred method is definitely speed trolling number one lure my speed spoons number two lure speedy shiners number three lure for speed trolling my crippled minnow rolling spoons. Now, if you haven't tried my speed spoons, they are superior to speedy shiners. They troll better, they're more versatile, and they cost less, enough said. The crippled minnow is an absolutely unique spoon. It is a rolling spoon. It's got the same size as a rolled shad, but you can troll it much faster. And when you're fast trolling out there for those kings, you wanna be going anywhere from two and a half to three and a half miles an hour. You're gonna have a lot of blowback on your downrigger, kind of figure out your true depth and go from there, but put in your time doing that speed trolling approach and it likely will pay off. If it doesn't, you're gonna need to slow down. 
Number one offering when you slow down is some sort of hoochie and blade. Um, fans of the channel, they've been going out there, they've been running six inch Fisheye Pro Dodgers. They've been trailing them with our minnow tubes tipped with anchovy skin or tipped with a piece of sardine skin and that's been working. Same depth range, cut the speed down to 1.8 to two miles an hour. You can also roll whole anchovies, anchovy tails and whole shad. That's working as well. Um, just again, you have to be patient. If you didn't get them speed trolling, you know they're not biting, so you really need to grind. You need to stay on those marks. You need to stay on those fish. At some point during the day, fingers crossed, they're gonna go and you're gonna hook something absolutely epic. Now for the trout, troll the same gear, but you can throw threaded worms into the mix. Um, one of our fans, what is his name? His name is Steve Hoyt. Steve Hoyt was out there the other day. He was trolling 55 feet deep off Brown's Ravine. He had a hoochie and blade on one rod. On his other rod, he was running one of my turbo flashers in a metallic color, he said. He caught a 5.68 pound rainbow, and uh, behind that turbo, he was uh, trailing, I think, what's he say here? About 20 inches back, a half a threaded night crawler on a slow death hook. Very basic presentation. He was going 1.8 miles an hour. He said that fish was almost instantly airborne and he said it put up an absolutely epic fight. I guess it came up into that warm water, jumped a couple times, decided it was too warm for comfort up there and then did a power dive straight back down to that 50, 60 foot range. So exciting stuff, Folsom hasn't been this good in years. The water level's starting to drop. Will that affect the bite? I don't know. I can't catch it when the water level's normal at Folsom. I'm not even sure there is a normal water level at Folsom. Anyway, bottom line is I would get out there between now and the next full moon. The water level's dropping. The full moon's going to have a, you know, an effect on the fishing. Now it may continue all summer. It may just shut down. Maybe the fish will move. We don't know. Get out to Folsom now and get after those big kings because it's not often that you can catch a double digit landlocked king. Enough said, let's go on over to New Maloney's Reservoir where they are getting fast, easy limits of big sassy kokanee that are averaging, average fish, 15 to 17 inches. That's like kokanee fishing in the old days. That's, you know, those are big, bright red, beautiful fillets, you can smoke them, you can barbecue them, you can pan fry them, you can make salmon patties, you can do a lot of stuff with them. Those are big eating sized salmon and you don't hear that a lot in conjunction with kokanee fishing anymore. You know, let's talk about Bullard's Bar where the fish are 10 to 12 inches. These are 15 to 17 inch fish and they're growing. They're getting bigger all the time. Key depth out there at Maloney's, 60 feet deep, okay? Guys are pulling apexes, Again, I'm reading, um, they're pulling those Pro Troll Kokanee Killers. That's basically their version of an a Apex, but it has that E-chip in it. Absolutely deadly Kokanee lure. Um, FHS minnow tubes are working. We had a fan out there the other day, actually two days in a row, he got limits on back-to-back -back days, and he says he was pulling pink and orange four-inch fisheye dodgers, and he was pulling pink and white minnow tubes and the green back shad um, pattern, shad tubes, tipping everything with corn, of course. Um, find the marks, find the fleet. I mean, it's no secret. It's one of the best kokanee bites in the entire you know, state at this point. Um, mix in, get your lures down at about 60 feet, make you know adjustments daily depending on what you see and get your fish on. Those are big, handsome fish. Maloney's, man, that is a place that, you know, it's got a history of kicking out big fish. 10 pound browns, eight pound rainbows. And you know, when the cycle is right, the kokanee there can be very, very big. Um, years ago, I saw the biggest California kokanee I ever saw caught. I was out with Alan Bonslet, um, former publisher and owner of the Fish Niffer magazine. We didn't know what we were doing. We were out just looking around, trying to catch trout, trying to catch kokanee. He was pulling an apex tipped with corn, a clear UV apex of all things. Can't remember how deep, but anyway, ripped it off the downrigger. I was on the net. He battled that fish up 22 inches long. I've been trolling for kokanee my whole life. I've got two 20 inches right at 20 inches. 
um, he just randomly popped that 22 incher at New Maloney's. That's what New Maloney's is all about though. It has always been a big fish lake. So if you want a limit of kokanee, if you want some good eating, get on out to New Maloney's Reservoir. Those are the two hottest bites, you know, that are valley adjacent right now. There's good fishing popping off all over the lake, or all over the state rather, not all over the lake. Um, you know, all the way from the bay, outstanding halibut action, offshore, outstanding bottom fish, lingcod action, high mountains, killer trout fishing's going on. Um, some places that are characteristically good are a little slow. Shasta's a little slow right now, for example, but that Whiskey Town Kokanee bite is red hot. So get out there, beat the heat, get your fish on, but the two very best bites adjacent to Sacramento and Stockton are definitely Folsom Lake Kings and New Maloney's Kokanee. You heard it here. If you're looking for any of the gear I mentioned in this video, get on over to fishhuntshoot.com. Thanks for all the support, guys. I'll see you real soon. I'm Cal Kellogg.